Food safety, we like to say, is everybody's responsibility. GAPS is an acronym for the words good agricultural practices. It's just common sense. GAPS revolves around sanitation. GAPS is a program that's entirely voluntary. GAPS is a framework for thinking about how you can grow food that's just as safe for your family as it is for anybody else's. Families worldwide enjoy fresh fruits and vegetables grown in North Carolina, from the sweet potatoes down east to the golden delicious apples out west. Our state and our nation have enjoyed one of the safest food supplies in the world, but over the last few years, outbreaks of foodborne illnesses have increased. The nature of the way that produce is being grown in the United States has changed very much in recent years. Much of the labor that's involved in vegetable and fruit production is migrant labor. Migrant labor now represents probably the largest number of food handlers in the United States, and yet because of language difficulties or because the laborers are probably easy to overlook, those laborers have the least education and knowledge about how to keep food clean. In 1997, President Bill Clinton launched a national produce safety initiative to help ensure the fruits and vegetables we eat, whether grown domestically or in other countries, are safe. GAPS derived from the National Food Safety Initiative. The National Food Safety Initiative joined with the Food and Drug Administration to produce a guidance document, not a regulatory effort. And that's where GAPS comes in, teaching sanitation methods. By following eight simple practices, farmers can do their part to ensure produce is safe from the farm to the table. We like to say it's easier to take care of things before problems occur. If you think before you handle something that may put dangerous bacteria on your hands, just think and don't do it. It's much easier to do that than to clean up the problem afterwards. Basically, action says, when you see something that needs to be done, go ahead and do it. It's just common sense. For example, it's important to keep livestock and other animals away from produce to help prevent contamination. Workers must maintain control of all controllable elements of the work environment, which leads to practice three, no contact. If there's any potential contact between animal waste or human waste, then those potential contacts need to be eliminated. For workers who wear gloves to handle produce, keep a box of clean gloves nearby. Never reuse gloves that have fallen on the floor or come in contact with potential contaminants. Also, workers should wash their hands after each visit to the restroom. In the field where running water is not available, a hand washing station should be provided. Most of the time they're not near a running water facility. All that they need to have is a tank, a small tank of water that's elevated so that water can actually run out of it uh, under the force of gravity uh, over their hands with soap. Using clean water is one of the most important gaps. When you see an irrigation system at work, how do you know what's in the irrigation water? How do you know what would remain on the crop after the water has evaporated. If you have a well from which you irrigate and you have had the water tested, how long ago was the water tested? How do you know what quality it is today? Have water tested regularly and keep record of the testings because what you put on your crops is just as important as when it's applied. 
as in practice five, fertilization. Fertilizing with animal wastes or biosolids must occur at least four months before harvesting crops. If you harvest crops before the four-month waiting period is up, there's a greater risk of living organisms from the fertilizer invading the crop. While it's important to keep a work area and crops clean, it's equally as important to keep yourself clean while working. It takes 20 seconds of good scrubbing under running water to really clean your hands. We recognize that many field workers are not going to do that unless you expect them to do it and show them how. Learn and follow all laws and regulations that apply to your operation. Make sure all employees also understand and follow these regulations. Ignorance of the law is no excuse if something goes wrong. The chain refers to from the beginning to the end, from the farm to the table, as they like to say these days. A person needs to consider that contamination of the crop, regardless of what the crop may be, can occur at any point from the beginning to the end. It, a, a crop can be just as contaminated on a salad bar before you eat it or in the grocery store as it can with a migrant worker picking it in Kinston, for instance. Consumers often ask, is this produce certified or inspected? Even though the certification and inspection process may help reduce food safety risks, neither can totally eliminate that risk. Certainly, though, they help meet consumer expectations of safe food production practices from the farm to the table. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Federal State Inspection Service has developed a voluntary GAPS inspection certification program. Inspectors from the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Cooperative Grading Service will inspect facilities and issue a federal state certificate following that inspection. The Cooperative Extension Service provides education about GAPS and the USDA program. Information about this process is available from the Cooperative Grading Service website. Their telephone number is 252-792-1672 or contact your local Cooperative Extension Center. Most of the time, keeping produce safe for all to enjoy is simple if everyone touching fresh produce just follows the eight gaps.